Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to integrate chat group skills into Survival Game Kit V2. So to get started, we're going to go over to our Survival Game Kit project, go to Edit, then Project Settings, then down to the Collision, then Presets, and we're going to add a new preset. We're going to call this Chat Area, spelled exactly like this. Set Collision Enabled to Query Only, and then tick Ignore for everything, and then hit Accept. Then we can close this out. Next, we're going to go back to our chat group skills project and right click the main folder chat group skills folder here and do migrate, then hit OK and go to your survival game kit project, then go to the content folder and hit select folder. That will copy over the files for us. And if we head back to our survival game kit project, you can see I've now got my chat group skills folder. Next, we're going to open up the survival game kit controller. So search for SGK controller and that's with the Survival Game Kit folder selected. And we'll open up the SGK controller. This might take a second to load. And once we're in there, we're gonna add a new component. We're gonna search for CGG. We're gonna add the CGG controller component like that and hit compile. Then we're gonna go back to the content browser, select chat group skills, and we're gonna search for controller. Open up the CGG player controller. And in here, we're gonna copy these nodes and paste them into our SGK controller, like that. Then we can compile. Now, because Survival Game Kit has a key binds menu, you may want to add some new key inputs that you can rebind for all of these controls. So to do that, we're going to go back to the project settings and then to the inputs option here. And if it's not already, just click the drop down for action mappings. And we're going to add a new action mapping. We're going to call this HUD mode. And this one is going to be, I believe, if we head back to the controller, we can check the HUD mode should be H. So I'm gonna click the little keyboard button here and press H. Then we're gonna add another new option and this is gonna be message mode. And I believe that's enter. So click the keyboard, press enter. Then we're gonna want another one and this is gonna be called hide chat. And we'll click the keyboard and by default this is J. You can use different keybinds for this if you want. These are just the default ones from our CGG controller. And then there should be one more and that is the toggle social menu which is N. So we'll go back to project settings, create another action mapping and we'll call this social, social menu like that. And this was N so I'm going to set mine to N as well. Now we can go back to our SGK controller and we're gonna right click and search for social menu. And under action mappings, we're gonna add in our social menu input, plug the pressed into this node and delete the end node. Then we're gonna do the same for the others. So we'll right click and search for message mode. And we want the message mode, plug pressed into the toggle message mode input mode. And then down here, we want the HUD mode. So we'll get the HUD mode and we'll plug that into the HUD input mode and delete the H. Then over here, we want hide chat. And we'll use that one to plug into this node here and delete the J input. So now we can compile and save this. Next, we're going back to the content browser and in the survival game kit, we're gonna search for game mode and we'll open up the SGK game mode. And in here, we're gonna set the game state class to the CGG game state. And we're doing this because Survival Game Kit doesn't actually have its own game state. So we're just gonna use the CGG one. And we're gonna do the same thing for the player state. So that's gonna be CGG player state as well. And now we can compile and save this, then close it. If you've modified Survival Game Kit and added your own player state or game state blueprints, you will need to go to those blueprints and add the CGG player state component and game state components to those blueprints. But I'm not going to be doing that because by default, Survival Game Kit doesn't actually have those blueprints. So we've just set our game mode to use the blueprints that come with chat group skills instead. Next, we're going to select the chat group skills folder and we're going to search for CGG player state and we want the CGG player state component. And in here, we're just gonna copy these nodes, close this, this blueprint, go to Survival Game Kit, and we're gonna search for game mode. Open up the SGK game mode again. And in here, we'll go to functions, then to spawn default pawn at transform. And in here, you can see that uh, we give our player a name. 
We're just going to replace this with the code that we've copied and pasted. Now, if you've already implemented Steam into your Survival Game Kit project, you won't need to do this because you'll already be getting uh, your Steam name from, from your controller. So we're just going to be plugging this in. But again, if you've already implemented Steam or whatever else, then you won't need to do this part. So now we can compile and save our game mode. And we're gonna head over to the Survival Game Kit character and add a nameplate. So it's up to you whether or not you follow this part. This is optional. So we're gonna go for uh, SGK character. And we're gonna open up the SGK master character. And I'm just gonna dra drag the uh, tab up here to the top. I'm gonna search for CGG and we want the CGG nameplate component. We're also gonna select the capsule component to add and search for widget and we're going to add the widget component as well, and then we'll compile. Now the next thing we're going to do is go to class settings, and then we're just going to click the add button here and search for name, and we want the CGG nameplate interface like that, and we'll compile. So the next part is we're going to add in our code for our nameplate. So if we go to interfaces, nameplate, we're going to need to go through these functions and add some code to them. The easiest way to do this is to go to our content browser here, and in the chats group skills, we'll just search for character, and we'll open up the CGG character, which is gonna be copying some code from here and pasting it into our SGK master character. So we'll start with the uh, replace name here, and we're just gonna highlight all these nodes, do control C, go back to our SGK master character, go to replace name, we're gonna paste these in. Now I'm gonna take the beginning node here, disconnect it from that return node, and I'm gonna drag this and connect it up to the is valid. Then we're gonna right click the CGG player state, do create variable, then we're going to delete this return node here and we're going to right click the player ID and do create variable and then we're going to compile. Next we're going to go back to the CGG uh, character then we're going to open up the CGG player ID and we're going to highlight and copy all these nodes, go back to the SGK master character, go to CGG player ID, paste those in like before, grab the start node here, plug that up to the is valid, we can delete this return node and we don't need to right click any variables because they're all created already so we can just compile next we have the show name panel so we'll open that up now ideally we only want our name panel to show when our character is uh, alive so i'm going to do if we scroll down we're going to get the character component we'll do get dead and then from that we're going to drag out and do not so we want not uh sorry not not equal we want not and we want there we go not boolean We'll plug that into enabled. If you do want the nameplate to show even when the character's dead on the ground, you just wouldn't use this code and you would tick this on instead, but I'm gonna hide mine when my character's dead, so I'm gonna use this code. Next, we're gonna go back to the CGG character. We're gonna open up the CGG guild. Do the same thing as before, just highlight all these nodes, control C, then open up the same CGG guild in the master character, paste that in, take this start node, plug it into is valid, delete this return node, and now we're gonna right click player guild, do create variable, and then we can compile. And then lastly, we go back to the CGG character, go to CGG name, and we're gonna just copy these nodes again. Open up the same CGG function here, paste that code in, take the start node, plug that into the is valid, delete this return node, and right click the player uh, display name, do create variable, and then we can compile. Now you may have noticed some warnings inside our CGG character. Don't worry too much about those. That's just because our input events don't exist in this project. You can just go through and delete these nodes if you want to, because we're not gonna be using this character anymore. So heading back to SGK character, we're gonna select the widget component we added earlier. And over here in the settings, we're gonna change the space to screen. Then we're gonna set the widget class. So we'll search for floating. And there's either one or two. So one is without a health bar and two is with. I'm gonna choose number two. And then we're gonna need the draw size. So if we go back to the CGG character here, select the widget, and we're just gonna copy it by right clicking, doing copy on the draw size, and then go back to our master character, paste that onto the draw size like that. And then for its location, we're gonna set this to 85 in the Z. You can adjust this if we go to the viewport. This is the position that our nameplate will be in. Uh, you can adjust this higher or lower or anywhere you want. Um, this is just the default value that we used in the CGG character. And then for pivot, we want to set the Y here to one like that. And then we can compile and save this. Now we can test this out. If uh, we go into the showcase to play, you can see that we've got our nameplate. Now, currently you can see as the character turns, our nameplate stays centered to our capsule. 
So maybe you want the nameplate to hover over the player's head instead, or you can do that if we go to the SGK master character. We can just take this widget, drag it over to the mesh here, drop it on that. And then with the widget selected, we can pick a socket. So if we click this down arrow here, we can search for head and we can select the head bone here. So now our widget will be attached to the head bone. You will have to reset its location. So I'll just reset this and then we can move it up to something like that. Now, when we hit play, we see that our nameplate is actually moving along with our head um, and stays above our head at all times. So this is really personal preference. If you want it to stay over the capsule, you can. If you want to attach it to the player's head, you can also do that as well. So you may have noticed that our health bar isn't actually showing above our character's head at the moment, and that's because we haven't set up the health component yet, so we will do that. You see also in the top left, we have the player's health as well. That's not going to update until we add the player health component as well. You may have also noticed our chat is now showing up, but it's covering our health and hunger and things like that. So what I'll show you how to do is how we can actually move that chat window. So if we exit out of player editor, select the chat group skills, we're going to get rid of this search. We're going to search for HUD and we're going to open up the chat group skills HUD. And in here is where you can actually choose the position that you want these widgets to be in. So you can see our chat here is in the left hand corner. I'm going to just drag mine over to the right hand corner. Now, uh, if we were to just hit play, our chat actually wouldn't be in this corner of the screen. It'd be some weird location. So because we've moved it over to the right hand side of the screen, we're going to want to change these uh, anchor. So over here in the anchors, we're going to click the drop down and we're going to pick the right hand side so that uh, it's using the anchor point closest to it like that. And if you want to get rid of the player health uh, widget that's up in the uh, top left hand corner, you can just select it, hit delete and it will be gone. And later on when you're in a group and you've got the uh, group members names, you can move this panel to wherever you like. So now we can compile and save this. So now if we hit play, you should see that our widget has moved. So our chat's on the other side there and uh, looks a lot better. So it's not covering up any of our panels. Next, I'm going to show you how to hide the CGG HUD while we're inside, say, an inventory so it doesn't block any of our panels. So next, we'll exit our player and editor. We're going to go to the survival game kit. We're going to search for player inventory. We want the player inventory. And we'll open that up. And then we're going to go to the initialize player inventory function. So just search for that in the My Blueprint panel. Open that up. And in here, we're just going to make a bit of space to add some new code. So we'll just drag this along. So next we can right click, search for SGK character and scroll down. We want get SGK character. From that, we're gonna drag out and do get controller. Then from that, drag out and do get component by class. Set the class to CGG controller. And we want CGG controller component. Drag out from the return value and do promote to variable. We'll just call this the C, oh, CGG controller component like that and we'll just connect this up here to the building component and then the other end to is server like that. Then next we're going to go and use the search again and we're going to search for toggle, open up the toggle inventory here and we're going to get our new CGG controller component, drag out from that and do unhide and we want the unhide CGG HUD and we want this to be at the top and then we want Drag out again, search for hide CGG, and we want hide CGG HUD and connect this up to the bottom. And then we're just going to highlight these nodes and actually copy them. Then we'll go to the toggle code lock UI and do the same thing in here. So we'll just paste these in and we'll connect the top one up to here, and the bottom one up to here. And then we'll go to the code lock uh, UI. So, oh, sorry, not that, the uh, build part UI name. There we go. We'll paste these in. Now we need to actually reverse these. So hide will be at the top and unhide will be at the bottom like that and then we can compile next we're going to go back to the content browser and we're going to search for the player building open up the player building component and in here search for toggle we want toggle name panel and we want to find the add to viewport node here we're going to change the z order to 100 like that and then we'll compile then head back to the player inventory and we actually need to go back to or actually find the open code lock UI. And that's the function here. Open that up. And just in here, uh, we can add it in here. We're going to do get CGG controller component, drag out, do CGG HUD. 
and we want to get the CGG HUD. From that, drag out and do an is valid. And then drag out from the CGG HUD again and do set visibility. And make sure this is set to non hit testable self only. Plug this into is valid. And then the execution pin, plug into our set visibility node here. Then is, val uh, is not valid, plug into open inventory open. And then do the same thing with the set visibility node. So it should look like this. Then compile. Next, we're going to set up the health component. So we'll start by going to the initialize player inventory node again. And from the control, uh, sorry, from the character, we're going to drag out and do get component by class. And we want to get the health, basic health component, drag out from the return value, do promote variable, and we're going to call this health component like that. Plug this into the code here. Obviously, you can spend a little bit more time making this nice and tidy. Then we're going to do get health component. And we'll drag out from that. We'll do set uh, current. And we want set current health. And we want to do get starting health. Plug that into current health. And then drag out from the health component again and do set max set max health there we go and then right click search for get max health and plug that into the set node and then from the set node don't forget to plug back into is server so it should look like this next we're going to search for decrease health open up that and we're going to do get health get health component drag out from that and do set current health and connect this up like this. And we want to get the current health, plug it into current health, then copy these two nodes, paste them in down here like this, copy them again, and then we'll compile and save. Then we're going to go to the increase health function. So we'll search for increase and we want increase health. So we'll paste these in here, plug them into the set node, and we'll take the set node's current value and plug it into current health, copy these, paste them in here and we'll plug them in like this and we'll take the current health from this node plug that into our current health node here and then we'll copy and paste them down here as well and get the max health copy and paste that and plug that into current health so should look a bit like this once you're done and then lastly we're going to head back over to our sgk master character so we'll in our survival game kit we're just going to search for sgk master character then we'll go to components and select add and search for health and add the basic health component and do compile and save that. Now we can test this out. We'll go back to the showcase, hit play. And now you can see that my player health is showing both above my head and on the left hand side there as well. If we run over to a damage zone here, just double check it's working. So that's all working now as well. The next part is optional and basically if you ever want to use the CGG nameplates with build parts in the future, you will want to follow this next part. If not, you can skip ahead. So we're going to exit out of player and editor, go to groups, chats, guilds, and we're going to search for floating. And we want the floating nameplate too. We'll open that up. Then go to the graph view. We're going to start by going to the health bar amount here. And we are going to drag out from is not valid and we'll uh, get the sorry get the nameplay actor paste that here drag out and do cast to master build part like that connect the uh, is not valid to this if cast failed can go down to here and if the cast does succeed we want to drag out from the master build part do promote to variable we'll call this uh, build part like that and we'll drag this up a little bit further then we're going to copy this code up here so just copy and we'll move this down out of the way. We'll paste this code in and we'll take our build part, connect it up to the branch here. Then over here, we're going to do get build part. Then we'll drag out and do get current health. Plug this into the top one. Then we'll drag out from build part and do get max health. Plug that into the bottom one here. Delete these nodes. So now we've got this code here. And over here, we're going to need to do another is valid like that. 
and if not valid, we'll run this code. And if it is valid, then we want to drag this over to our branch here. Now uh, you can spend a bit more time getting this tidy. I'm just going to add some reroute nodes here so we can see what's going on. And then for the input, we want our um, build part. So we'll drag out from the input, search for build part like that. So it should look a little bit like this. And then we're going to move on to the update or the health text amount. And we're basically going to do exactly the same thing. So we'll drag this down out of the way. We'll copy and paste this down here. Then from uh, we want to copy our nameplate actor, drag out from there, do cast to master build part, connect this up to is not valid. And if is valid, we want to set the build part. So set build part from that connect up to our branch from uh, cast failed plug this down here in the branch and then back here we want to do is valid like that and we will get the build part build part like that and then over here we need to replace these nodes so we'll delete these to get build part get current and get max health plug that into the bottom like that so once you're done should look a bit like this oh one other thing uh, we want this to run if not valid if this is valid we want to plug this into the branch again we can make some reroute nodes just to make it a little bit tidier like that and then we can compile and save this so now we're almost done we're going to head back to the showcase then to chat groups guilds and we're going to search for area open up the master chat area just select this box and make sure that this is set to chat area if it's not just select chat area and uh, then you can compile and save that so now we're ready to actually test this out we can go back to the showcase i'm going to set this to uh, number of players two we'll set the net mode to players listen so we can have two players playing together we'll hit play and you can see i've got both my players loading in you can see they're actually both in the same guild because uh, i was doing a, a test before but we can both see each other's names if i press n i can open up the social menu you can see we're both in the same guild all the players are showing up correctly you can also press enter to uh, send a message so we can say hello and if i tab over to my other player you can see he's also seeing the message i can send a message back hello so everything's working correctly and if we uh, exit out and i hit play again you can actually see that our guilds are still loading so the save system is working as well so that's pretty much it for this video. Don't forget if you want to uh, move any of the CGG uh, widgets, you can do that in the chat group skills. Just search for HUD and you can move those around in the chat group skills uh, HUD. If you don't want the uh, name showing up here, we can just delete it, compile, hit play. You can see that now that widget isn't showing up anymore for either of our characters and you won't get any errors or anything like that. You can just remove it. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.